A shining soul that makes me smiley. It's none other than Mr. Miles O'Reilly, a man who has given so much of his time to capturing other artists in their prime. But on this occasion, we focus on him and the beautiful outcome of his own creative whim. With his hand on his heart, Miles sings from the deep. And Miles, oh my, how this song makes me weep. Call me a creep, call me a fool. I'd still dive headfirst into the Miles O'Reilly pool. So shall we? What is a song? Where do songs come from? What is the life of a song? How much can a song morph and change before it becomes something else entirely? Please welcome uh, Mr. Miles O'Reilly, everyone. Miles is just going to get plugged in here with his microphone. Um, so yes, this this show is 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 exists in order to uh, focus on one song and to provide any additional context around that song, and to, to find that one song's place in the world. Because um, each song will have its own unique place, and uh, Miles has a new song of, of his uh, that is very special to me, and I, I hope, um, I'm sure special to some others, and possibly to some of you as well. Um, so we're going to get into that song, it's called Shine. Uh, but first, we'll give a little background as to um, how Miles and I came to be sat here together. Miles, do you remember the first time that we met? I remember the first time that we met. I don't know if it's the same time that you remember when we met. What are you thinking of? Um, you walked into a bar in Cork, actually. I think it was about five years ago. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, that's fucking Peter Broderick. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's not the time I'm thinking of. Are you, sh we, we, I'm thinking of the time that you came out to our house oh, in, right. at the Gable Door. So yes, that's right. Was that the first time we met? It, that was actually the first time. Okay, right. So yeah. this was 2015 or 16, right? It was 2016. Or maybe even 17? Or maybe even 17. Uh, you were working with a man called Donald Deneen mm -hmm. on um, a video project called This Ain't No Disco. Mm -hmm. And you guys were, uh, you came out to our house in the countryside out near Hedford uh, here, mm -hmm. not too far, about 20 minutes drive from here. Mm -hmm. um, and you came out there with Donald and you were filming uh, myself and a couple others out there doing some music as part of a series you were working on. That's right. I was hiding behind the camera. Yes. Which is why I don't say it's the first time we really met, because I don't think we said two words to each other. We, we didn't but say I, much I, at all. I was witnessing you, um, like two feet away from you, through my little screen of my camera. That's it. Which became a glorious piece of film. Um, I think one of the one of the few moments of the This Ain't No Disco series that I was making with Donald mm -hmm. that, I, that I really thought um, had the most uh, beautiful reactions from people who watched it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that setting where we lived out there was really beautiful. It's out by the Loch Corrib for those who are local and know where that is. Mm. Um, an old like thatch cottage out by the lake. And we, we, we even did a song a cappella out there. 
It was um, unbelievable. It was but like, that was my introduction yeah. to you, having mm-hmm. just moved to Ireland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I meet you as a cameraman mm-hmm. uh, for this series. And um, little did I know that you had a whole musical history. Uh, uh, and then you would go on working primarily as a cameraman in the music world for a while. But then eventually, this year, you've come out with an album of your own delving into the music once again. And um, and so, yeah, uh, well, first of all, I wanted to say, when you came to, to visit that time in 2017, did you bring, did you happen to bring a microphone stand of yours? Do you, does this, this is a long time ago, I know, but did you have a microphone stand that was really beat up and maybe some bits of tape on it? Yes. Right, so after you guys left, mm. I noticed that was there, but I somehow, rather than telling you guys, I just adopted it and have used it for the last five years. So I thought maybe I could take this occasion to give you back your microphone stand. Let me just see if you recognize this. It's very beaten. And for years, I I don't know why I didn't just bother to go buy a microphone stand, but I just adopted this guy here. And... um, just want to see if you recognize this. Now, I did put some different pieces of tape on it, but does this belong to you? <laughs> That's too, oh, oh my God, thank you for giving it back. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I mean, um, it's the worst microphone stand I've ever seen. Which but. is why I might have left it. With you. <laughs> <laughs> or it didn't, didn't miss it. Oh, I'm so glad to have you back. Thank you. Okay. Do you know what? That it's come full circle back to me, I must keep it. You must, uh, and, yeah. And it must be the most treasured mic stand now. Right. You know, it, it's gone from being the least treasured to the most treasured. There we go. And you must sign it for me as well. One man's trash is that same man's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really annoying one. So, no, it's not annoying anymore. I love it. Great. Yeah, okay, wow. Well, we got that out of the way. Um, so there's so much to talk about with this album um but i'm wondering should we maybe just have a listen to the song first and then we can sort of just take a dive into all the questions and conversation i'd love people to hear the song great um i've got the cd here i don't know jono we've got jono behind the camera here maybe jono you could get a, a quick shot of that there um where is this album cover taken actually it's taken on inish bofin in Boffin. Boffin. Boffin Island. That's where Patter's from. That's where these guys of the Black Gate are from. It's got a particularly cool scar that goes down the middle of this rock face, which is similar to the scar that's happening here. You pointed that out right here. That's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. Patter, do you know where this is by any chance? It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit far, but... I also want to point out yeah, that when you take the CD out of this, it's got one of the nicest CD tray inlays. There's a little kitty cat <laughs> curled up right inside there. It's, a, it's, just, it's beautiful. Jono, can you see that? That's Seamus. That's Seamus, okay. Uh, is Seamus on one of the tracks on this album? Because yes. there is a cat. <laughs> she can hear I was Seamus. listening to it the other day and I, I went looking at the windows to see if I could find my cats because <laughs> I thought they were trying to come in. Okay. So here's Shine by Miles O'Reilly. Mm. Only ever wish that I 
wish that I would shine, 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 shine. in my life to ignore it I was told I was in money and crying to a song Shine That's the song that we're here to talk about. And there, there's, for such a simple sounding song, there's so much, I know from talking to you a little bit, that there's so much behind it and around it. And I felt it even before starting to talk to you about it. Um, <clears throat> but maybe before giving you the floor to sort of give us that context, could I tell you a bit more about... Um, just when I first heard that song, actually, mm-hmm. um, because I met you, like I said, as a as a, a cameraman, mm. and uh, for people who lived here in Ireland, uh, may, may might have known you before that. 
um, maybe this wouldn't be such a surprise to hear you hear you sing, but I met you in several instances in which you were the cameraman. First, that time we talked about already, mm. um, and even last year, you and I uh, were at, were at a Body and Soul Festival here in Ireland, where there wasn't a public, but they had artists come and people come to uh, film those yes. artists, and you were the person that got assigned to film my thing there. That's right. So then again, I'm in this role with you as the cameraman. Mm. Um, and actually, just a little tangent about, about that. I don't know if you remember, but we I set up a tent out there. And uh, we ended up camping out together. Um, and like we didn't, we really had only met a few times. Of course, it feels like we know each other better than we do because we have mutual friends. And mm. Um, mm. But... I wanted. I always wanted to know if you remembered this because there was a moment there that happened. You do. You're you're nodding already. We had finished our work for the day. We went and sat around a fire with everybody else, but we ended up back in the tent. Well, this crazy person appeared at the fire. Someone appeared at the fire that made us a bit uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I left. You left. Went back to the tent. You eventually caught on and went, came back to the tent. Yes. And then. There were, we had a guitar. I, had, I remember I had a harmonica with me because every once in a while I think, gosh, wouldn't it be cool to play the harmonica because it's so small, you can bring it everywhere. You know when you see someone on the side of the street playing harmonica and they're just really sh- shredding we, we, on it. We had the best session we, in you, the tent I think you at were playing, 3 in the morning yes. till 6 in the morning. You were playing the guitar, yeah. and I was playing the harmonica, and I can't play the harmonica, <laughs> but I expressed the depths of my soul through that harmonica that night. <laughs> and we had a little bit of whiskey, and you, you, you had a little bit of a session ready in the back there. And we, yeah. It was a beautiful night, but do you remember waking up like in minus 10, like frozen solid? Yeah. I think you had to get up and run around. I had to put on loads more clothes and yeah. it's still freezing. Right. Oh my God, we were wrecked the next day. We were. And then we had to film our song. Oh, it was then we had to film the song. <laughs> That's right. That's why the version we captured isn't very good. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I, we never spoke about that moment afterwards. But we, no, we had this session in the tent that was like spiritual. So it was spiritually um, really good. We exchanged a lot of... Um, information about the stuff we love. And I think we so. We love a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, and we had we had spoken that day about mm. our mutual love of ambient music, mm. and we discovered that we both like. There's a few uh, very obscure uh, makers of ambient music that we both really like, and mm. so that was another mm. way for us to bond. And so then I okay, here's Miles, the cameraman. Oh, Miles loves ambient music, and I knew that I had seen some things online. I think you had started putting out some ambient musings that you were working on. I guess so. Like, had you? Yeah, just like stuff, sketches. I wasn't taking it seriously. Sure, okay. Uh, I think that part uh, that part of my life, actually meeting you um, as, a, as a professional, Peter, who, who, who has your foot a little bit in that world, uh, and meeting you and hanging out with you kind of broke a wall for me a little bit, in a way, huh. and gave me a little bit of confidence. After I had met you that time. Interesting. You know, just in my musicality um, and in the, in the language, in the tent with the whiskey and right. the smoking. But the language we were talking, I felt, you know, you know, I'm not talking about cinematography. I'm not talking about editing. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about music with a musician. And it felt, it, it uh-huh. really, it made, it gave me this kind of a vigor. Right. And it was just one of the many things that made me move away from filming into music. Yeah. yeah. So so that. so that was kind of one of the last times I saw you, mm. um, and then I was in Claire earlier this year. I was I told you about this earlier today. I was there uh, doing a bit of a residency, working on some music, and at the end of my trip there, I met up with our mutual friend um, Simon O'Reilly, mm. uh, and he was like, he said to me. Uh, Miles is uh, almost finished with his vocal album. And I had seen a few bits online that you were starting to sing. And I I was very intrigued. Um, But he's like, Miles sent me over a new song today. And he wants me to play pedal steel on it. And it was that song, Shine. So he he played that for me that night. That was back in April of this year, 2022. And uh, I was immediately floored by the song. Like I had this... 
I had this, um, it just, I, I felt a, po- a potent sense of, um, there was just something very, um, how do I describe it? Not heavy, but, but um, big. It, it felt like something big was coming out in the song to me. And especially because having known you from the guy behind the camera, then to the guy making ambient music, and then having heard some of your first um, songs with singing, and, uh, and also like on this album, Cocooning Heart, mm-hmm. most of the songs, the vocals are quite hushed. They're quite, um, mm-hmm. they're, they're hushed. They're, mm-hmm. wi- they're a whisper kind of tone almost. Mm-hmm. But in this song, Shine, it's like it goes from a cocooning heart to like a butterflying heart. You know, it's um, <laughs> it, it sounds like all of a sudden you're like you're just out there in the open expressing very plainly mm. uh, a pure sort of essence. And I was really struck by it. Um, so mm. so that's my story with mm. with this song. And mm. and I'd love for you to just give us any and all context of of. Where, where, how this came about? Well, it's funny. I denied. I had stopped playing music because I, could, because for, there was a sequence of events when I was playing a lot of music in my twenties, a sequence of events that made me stop wanting to be in the spotlight and what made me stop wanting to use my voice. But how, how to back up a little bit, if you don't mind? How did you first get in, get um, into music? I just I saw an ad. For a band wanted a singer and I knew I was capable and my mother thought I was a brilliant singer. She couldn't stop telling it to all my siblings. She wanted you to shine. And my siblings hated the fact that my mother, yeah. And um, But uh, no, I answered this ad to be in a band and that band had a kind of a head, there was a head to the band who was very good at administration and who knew all about the industry and and we did, we did quite well and we signed a publishing deal the same week as Amy Winehouse with the same label and the same A&R. And then it was uh, two years later, we signed to Virgin, V2 Virgin, and, and we, we, we released two albums. Um, they were quite under the radar here because it was a London label, but right. we were drowned in London. Nobody knew us there either. So, right. you know, there was this kind of thing where we were doing a lot of work, but we're getting no rewards and no audiences really from any of it. And it just, it's, um, the, the band dropped away. Um, I was 29, 30, 31 when I decided um, I was on my own and the label really just liked my voice and they were just trying to get me to write songs and trying to get me to be, um, you know, uh, facilitating me with money. And it was like I was on the dole, basically. But um, I, For people outside of Ireland who won't know, won't know what the dole is, that's like, you know, social welfare. Social welfare. It felt like that to me because there was no real rewards coming back from, from it. And, and essentially that's why there was no deal anymore at the end of the day. I, I, I owed so much to the label. I wasn't making Oh, wow. It's one of those horror big label stories that you hear uh, about. Big horror label story. Wow. Uh, yeah, textbook, you know, they say... Uh, um, they say 90% of all bands that get signed don't make a second album. And right, 90% right. of bands that make a second album don't have a hit, don't uh-huh. make a third. You wow. know, it's like this, we, we were in that majority of bands that just didn't do well. And, and then in the end, it was just me and my mm-hmm. own. And I have other talents. Like I love photography yeah. and I love filmmaking. And yeah. uh, when I turned to those at a time when music was just falling apart and when right. I turned to filmmaking everything seemed to blossom and my life just seemed to blossom right and I just filmed what I knew which was music mm-hmm. and I had friends in music like uh, I had good friends doing well in music like Glenn Hansard and Lisa Hannigan and I, I I filmed them I made videos for them yeah and Ronan a snow Lake, and I just I just had my camera I said like, do you mind if I'm around backstage do you mind if I just make some stuff and put it on YouTube which was new at the time yeah yeah and it was like they were like delighted with that you right. know it's like and and it did well for them so they started paying me to come around and and next thing I knew is um you know uh, for for 14 years I had been filming and uh, musicians um, wow. just just me filming editing and um, 
choosing the songs, which is a unique thing. Sure. Because uh, they're friends more than clients. Sure. And um, I've had a lot of freedom in that world to express myself and, uh, but essentially learn as well, learn from musicians that have done it right or uh, things have been going right for them. Sure. So you're coming out of this f- sort of failed music industry experience. Rad full experience. Sitting behind the camera, taking note of how people are doing things a little bit. How they're doing it right. Wow. You know, yeah. like, Glenn Hansard doing it right. Lisa Hannigan doing it right. Conor O'Brien doing it right. Right. And so I made videos for them and I hung out with them and I'm just learning. And it, like, there's no, there was no part of me thinking, I'm learning this so maybe I can enable myself to do sure. music better. It sure. wasn't like right. that. It was just, I was committed to being a filmmaker and I am still committed to being a sure. filmmaker. And I still do do those things for my friends. Um, but um, uh, I, but just from watching so much and from listening so much, I was kind of tutored back eventually tutored back from the knowledge that I was gleaning from my footage and from the works, I was tutored back into a set of feeling of confidence, yeah. um, which in that album, um, specifically that one, when I decided to sing again, Cocooning which, Heart, Cocooning Heart, which was only, I decided to sing again in March. In March, um, so recent. Yeah, yeah, it's just March. It's this year. Yeah. Wow. And when I decided to do that, I, that's when I decided also at the same time, it's not just messing around. I decided I was going to commit to trying again and putting myself out there again. Yeah. As much as any of my peers and the people I've been watching. Yeah. Um, and just see how it goes. Because I, th- I had this renewed sense of confidence from watching and listening and learning. Um, but it starts off with whispers. The album does. It's all whispery, whispery, whispery. Yeah. And I know Shine is track three, but it should be the last one because it was the last one that, oh, I, was it? that I've written. Oh, sure. Yeah. I haven't written another one since, but it is the most vivacious. I'm back. I'm shining. Right. And the whole intention, I guess, of the lyric is, you know, I want to shine because people, other people want me to shine and yeah. they get to shine when they hear me shining and right. we all shine together as a self-perpetuating, shining, glowing ball of love, which I've, which I've experienced. I've, I've played that live a few times and um, it's a beautiful thing to see what it does to a room and to an audience, you know. Yeah. And everyone gets a chance, I think, after the pandemic um, to sing the, the chorus of that song is quite nice. Uh, yeah, it's so sing-alongable. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's so catchy, you know, and... You know, it's, it was so interesting for me to hear it because we had sort of bonded over really uh, abstract, obscure music. <laughs> you know, so so to then hear you come out with this like sing along song. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I have to say, we did. We we were talking about. I was I was citing my favorite ambient artists. Yeah, as in they are the ones I listen to all the time. Um, but every time I said a new ambient artist that I love, uh, Peter would be like, oh yeah, I know him. Oh yeah, I know her. Oh yeah, no, we found out. I know I made an album with her. And I was just like, holy shit, you're living among them. You know. I, I guess I've met a lot of musicians over the years. Fair play to you, Peter. <laughs> you're right. Um, that also, I mean, also it made it more realistic to me that I could be among people like that. You know? Sure, like, you know, sure. Music. Yeah, it's not just the the fantasy world it's, it's not fantasy. It's the real world it's a bit of reality so yeah. thank you for reminding me that that can be a reality if you really want that you know my pleasure here we are talking about a song that i love <laughs> and and has actually made me well up many times it's there's just something a simple beauty to it that that just cuts straight to my heart um oh thank you i um i remember i had written the verse uh, in my kitchen it, yes, yeah, it, it kind of just kind of fell out as consonants and um, phonetically um, there weren't any really words. It was just a playing it on my little keyboard. But as, as soon as I hit on 
Sunshine, shine. I was just start crying. I was wow. I had to, I was crying for like half an hour until I actually had the restraint to go record that now and I immediately recorded what you hear there. There's no second takes. So ah, is that it? Now, this is a perfect moment, I think, to maybe share, because uh, I asked you when we were pre- preparing for this, do you have any demos or anything? And you were kind enough to send over, to dig up a, a sort of voice memo of this moment where basically the song was being written. Yes, the, the, the tune I put, I recorded on my phone. I put the phone on the table and it, it was 10 minute long thing. That's and it. That's it. So... And I said this last week with with Innie K as well. Um, these are the sort of things that I really cherish and want to want this show to be a platform for. There's there's all this audio material that artists sort of secretly hoard and maybe listen to once, but mm. it, it sits somewhere, and it's actually very special and very enlightening to the creative process. Um, so you described this as the moment where you know the song kind of came. You were sitting there playing it and sort of wordless vocals, but then some right. of the phrases sort of start to emerge. Yes, um, there's a clarity. It was like a slow pulling focus on yeah. actual words. So do you mind? Like, I know the clip is 10 minutes long, but I feel like we should just play the whole thing because it really shows. Sure. It really shows the, the creative process, raw and true to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How it is. Definitely. We can li- li- I don't mind listening to the full thing. But the the first four minutes is you know it's just the kind of garbled, um, speaking in tongues, but you know around four minutes the lyrics just come from nowhere That's it. And, and and it's just it's my heart going. This is what you want to say, you know. Right. It's like yeah. Just, hang on, just sing what I want to say. Let me see if I got it here. Right. So I'm gonna play this. This is. This is about 10 minutes long. Um, are we okay with the sound and everything? Did you want to quickly check some? Oh, you have a couple glasses of wine. What a gentleman. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Liam, just mute my one here for a moment because I'm just going to duck into the back for a second while this is playing. It's a little keyboard that I'm, I can hold like a flute. And my eggs are boiling. <laughs> I just like the repetitive kind of loop of that. It's just three chords. So I'm like, oh, it's like Coldplay, you know? Like, who can't write a Coldplay song? Good. I thought, okay, I should just keep singing this. There's no lyrics, but I need to keep playing this because I felt like I'm expressing something that's quite deep and there's no focus yet. Straining. It's just very natural. It's a moment in time. 
It's a moment in time. You hear that? A moment in time. It's a moment in time. That's the yeah. That's a lyric that didn't make it into the final version. I love. I love the most. It's me convincing myself that what's coming out is a moment in time. I love the most. I fucking love this. I'm like, <laughs> it's a moment in time. I love the most. I love this the most. This is guy. So I just keep going. But my mind is thinking. Okay, now I think I need to like find. What do I want to say? Like, what is it I want to fucking express? What is it that will help me if I express it? Or if I say it? That's it. or which vowels are suiting my own voice, you know? My heart going. This is what the fuck is it? These are the words. That's the. That's like more or less the first line of the song. It just comes out. Then all of a sudden, it just comes out. So I had a stepfather who didn't encourage it. Suddenly, my mo- my brain, my brain is explaining to me what I want to sing about. You know, and shine. Pull focus, pull focus. Filmmakers' terms here. My stepfather did not enjoy it. And money came into it because he was always like, Are you making any money? Are you making any money? Are you making money? So I brought my mother into it. My brain brought my mother into it, you know? There was so much emotion. It's me going at the time, and this is a lot of emotion, you know? But it's kind of being blasted away by the idea of the concept now. Thanks for the trans the uh, transcription. At this point, I like I could. I'm almost like in tears, you know. Another 
important line sort of it just magnifies yeah it took it away from I don't you know Seth Rollins was an asshole it took away from that to like it was his problem that he was an asshole it wasn't my problem mm. I didn't hear it at Though it's better to get a job and own it. Though it's better to pay the rent myself. And it's a I think I kind of, I think I resolved just there that it wasn't going to be a song about my stepfather. I pushed it to the max about him, and I decided right there's only a little bit of information about him that I need in this in these lyrics. Yes, right. But I pushed it there to the max. I'm like beating myself up about it. I'm like, okay, it doesn't need to be that much. But I went back to the mother element. That was the important part. And that became the most important part. You know, and the word shine that five minutes ago you heard, I said once, um, reappears, not in this recording, but reappears like five minutes later upstairs when I'm, when I'm writing right. the song. Um, and then that, that became the lyric of the chorus, you know. The shine just planted itself there. It, Interesting. <laughs> but um That's the, audio gold to me, this sort of thing. <laughs> it was nice to hear my brain because you know, it's literally it's like moving out of a very vague, also almost state of dementia as a whole blah 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 into clarifying yeah. what is it you want to feel and what is it you're feeling, what are the words for that? Do they rhyme? Make <laughs> make them rhyme. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, I, I, you know, as I have to say personally, as a stepfather myself, I'm a stepfather. So I hear this song well, and I, I think... I love you as a stepfather. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> because damn. I hear this song and I think, I don't want to be that guy <laughs> in the song. <laughs> um Right, yeah. but that's not what this is about. I, um, yeah. I wanted to... There's a couple more things I wanted to ask you about. So, so right. That's the moment when you were writing the song, Shine, that then appears on this album, released this year, 2022, Cocooning Heart. Um, the first song on this album uh, is called Cocooning Heart. And I wanted to ask you if... Because the lyrics to me sound like they're describing the greater context of how the album came about. You you say at some point, you say, I'm tired of being the one to listen. Now I'll make some music and make it love me. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's like it's like you're you're Yeah, love me. Yeah. Mm. Like but when you say I'm tired of being the one to listen, like you're tired of being the one behind the camera just listening. Yeah. Now you want to be the one making the music. Yeah. I mean the pandemic just hit and I had several big projects that were they were mighty projects. Film projects. Film projects. Right. Big big musical projects and there was funding. I was I was going to New York to to showcase a couple of this ain't no discos actually. Right. Uh, in the Irish Arts Centre in New York, and we the had... The same series where that made us yes, initially meet. That yeah. series, and that was going to be my career um, at the time the pandemic hit. It was, we were due to be in New York 
um, only days after um, they closed okay. the airports. Right. And we had lined up a lot of philanthropists and investors to be there, and Irish American people with money who were dying to give us the money uh, to, for us to produce uh, another another unlimited amount of this ain't no disco. I see. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So if the pandemic hadn't hit, I would have been so committed to that life. Um, with all right. the pressure of it, these investors and for the first time in my life to have that kind of um, uh, money and responsibility I mean I would have been committed forever so um, when the pandemic hit and it was all over there was about two weeks of like tragedy where everything mm. I'd worked for for 14 years or 12 years at the time was just falling apart and like it just caved in because we couldn't uh, I guess the the film projects all just caved in because we couldn't go out and meet and film and couldn't course, do our, yeah. our thing. And we're so guerrilla that uh, I, I, we couldn't, there was no workarounds either. I know that there were um, series made for Netflix and everything where they just they just made it happen. Yeah, right. But like we didn't have, we, we were We had to have some guerrilla. sort of content as we were stuck inside, right? <laughs> we just didn't. I, do you know, there was a part of me going, yeah, okay, let's just try and fucking make it work. But part of me just caved in and went, nah, feck, feck it, boof, boom. That's and it, it right. I was over. That was it. It was like my career was over. It was like career-ending moment wow. for about two weeks. Until a friend of mine lent me this. I was um, so depressed. Lent you this. Let's just say what it is for the audio listeners it's at home. The, it's the Moog Subsequent 37. Yes, synthesizer. <laughs> Which is like a cello of synthesizers. It's for the one finger synthesizer player. Um, it doesn't do chords. Um, so it, it's oh, it's monophonic, one monophonic. note at a time. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. It's really just like a cello player, you know. Um, it's got a big filter knob, which is just like a bow. And um, I just had fun. I was really, a friend dropped it around to me going, maybe you need this, Miles. Um, uh -huh. And as soon as I started playing it, I started singing. Uh, up in my attic. Yes. And as soon as I started singing, just like that song Shine, uh, the lyrics immediately for Cocooning Heart just fell right. out. Fell right. out. And now I want, it's like I'm tired of being the one to listen. Now I want to make music love me. Right. And just fell out. And so that's why that's number one on the album. Yep. And it's whispered because I'm upstairs in my attic literally whispering it into a mic because if I'd be so embarrassed if my wife heard me. Or the really? Cats heard me. Yeah, no. Wow. Like, I'd, wow. I'd, like, if she left to go to the shop, I'd be like, okay, now's my time to record a vocal. <laughs> and I'd, like, I'd still be whispering it because I didn't want the cats to hear it. And then, <laughs> and then I'd hear the front door in the middle of a verse that's going really well. And I'd be like, oh, fuck, oh, now I can't continue. <laughs> and she's like, are you all right up there? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Just like, working on some ambient music. <coughs> when are you going to the shop again? <laughs> oh, tomorrow, right? Okay, fuck. And so I, I wow, continued. yeah, she, really, they yeah. were so shy with it. Oh, super, like super, like vulnerable, like the most right. vulnerable. I think because I just denounced it like so That's long ago. That's what fourteen years behind a camera had done to you. Yes, yeah, but at the same time, funnily enough, like at the same time, there was a. 14 years away from music, watching it so much and listening to it so much, I was still evolving as a musician. Right. Like, well, how could creator. you not? Like, yeah, how could you not? Yeah. If, you're, if you come from, from being a musician, mm. you have that musicality already, and mm. then you're watching and absorbing all this music, mm. I, how could you not sort yeah. of, yeah. I was just learning the whole time. Right. It's like, it's like there's 10 albums in those 14 years that don't exist, that, right. you, know, that you think should, because the link... For me, is there? Mm. You know, I just hopped from being pop folk artist into cocooning hearts. Yeah. So I was like, did I just make that? Because I really like that. Yeah. Did I just sing that? Because I really like that. It was very hard to do up in my attic, and I felt very vulnerable doing it. Um, but I felt so proud listening back to it. You know, right. I was like, I can fucking do that. Right. No way. Yeah. And so the album is really a series of. Me going, I can do that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, and it's a sh it's a shock for for me. Like I said in the beginning, to 
to see you as the guy who's not saying anything, hiding behind the camera, to then, you know, being out in front singing in your full bodied voice. <laughs> Like, it's like, oh, he can do that. <laughs> what was he doing behind the camera filming all the musicians, you know? Um, I, I guess in a way I just never wanted to leave music, you know? Yeah. I never wanted to leave it. And yeah. I had to do something within it uh, that made money. and made, made my stepfather go, oh, are you making money? Right. I remember actually five years, he, he died five years, years into me being a filmmaker. Shortly okay. before he died, he was like, he had dementia, so it was it was terrible because every time I call around, he'd be like, "Are you making money?" <laughs> like every time, and I would go, "Yes, yes, I am making money. How much money are you making?" And I'd be like, "Well, a couple of grand. Somebody a video, a couple of grand made it in two days." <laughs> like and I really take it in there. Yeah, right. right. But it was shit because he had dementia. And he'd forget, and I'd have to do it the next day. I'd be uh. like, "Couple of grand." <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know that's that's where I'd worked myself into, um, which was kind of sad and you know a bit heartbreaking. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I I feel like uh, one more piece of this puzzle that's worth bringing up is um, in this sort of evolution of coming back to playing music is uh, something I started to see in the last couple of years is you were collaborating with a, a man, Ronan Osnodi. Yes. Um, and that kind of brought you back on stage as a yeah. musician again. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Please say his name for me because I'm terrible with pronunciation of Irish names. Actually, you said it better than 90% of the Irish population. Wow. Okay. Ronan, <laughs> Ronan Osnodi. Okay. Snoddy. Whereas a lot of people go Snoddick. And uh-huh. uh, there's three brothers, Ronan, Colm and Rosso Snoddick from Keela. Yes. The band Keela. And everyone would be quite aware of them. And um, everyone says Snuddick. So yeah, you said it right. Here Snuddick. in Ireland, Snuddick. most people know who they are. Yeah. You don't pronounce the GH. Um, okay. Yeah. And Ronan was a friend of mine. Uh, I, I lived in Dingle for a time as a musician. And when I was like crumbling and playing to two people in Dingle, playing my own songs to like three or four people in a pub in Dingle, Ronan would be the one like going, like fucking looking at me like, like I was one of the greats. Right, wow. And okay. Brian me a point and like, I'm like, why are you Was doing, he already you established this? as a musician himself at big that time, stage? Big okay. time, big time, big time established. And I, yeah. I was so intimidated by him because he was so, as I was initially meeting you, it's because he was just so professional and doing it all the time. And, and so I was so honored, like I am being here today, so honored to be uh, received by someone like that. And so Ronan was the first he, actually, he, he throughout my time as a filmmaker, he was like, "What are you doing?" Really? Yeah, okay. like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. yeah. And he'd call around to me with the instruments. He'd just give me an instrument and be like, "Oh, thanks for the mandolin, great." And then, like two years later, "Oh, thanks for the guitar, thanks, Ronan." Yeah, yeah. You know, he wow. just he would always remind me of the fact that I was a musician because he had such admiration for what I was doing. Um, Interesting. When I when I thought I was do, doing nothing, it was all terrible. And so when I started doing this, uh, Ronan, in the middle of all the pandemic stuff, uh, Ronan called around, which was totally not allowed at the time. Right. And uh, he was like, fuck, I just thought I'd call around. How are you doing? And he said, give me a guitar. Boom. And I had a camera and I was like, do you mind if I film it? Boom, that's what I do. And so I filmed him singing a song called Tan to Lum. Uh-huh. It's a song he wrote during the pandemic. And it turns out he wrote like 10 of these songs, beautiful, romantic, gorgeous songs during the pandemic where he really got out of himself uh-huh. and got out of the, the, the way of thinking that Keela has kind of, you know, uh, ingrained sure. on, on him. He, he managed to get a distance away from them to really feel himself. So I was very honored to film that one song. But when he left... Um, I played synthesizer all over it because oh, I'm you? in this okay. mode, you know. Right, I'm right. making sound, so I played synth all over it, and and then once the pandemic and that took really well, we put out the video and it it went viral. Uh, okay. First, like, um, what is going viral? Like 40, 70, 60,000 views. Sure. Within wow. a week. Yeah. And um, a lot of people going, "Whoa, Miles, is that you playing synthesizer? What the fuck?" Right. Like, That's what you look like. All right. Right. And um. It's just that was my first introduction to, oh, maybe I could play publicly. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. 
uh, and so I decided before I would sing again publicly yeah. uh, that I, spe- I I actually put a lot of time into Ronan and making an album with him yes. and touring that album and producing essentially that album um, yeah. with him, which has done very well up to now. Yeah, so. and you guys went on to gig all around the country. Mm. And we, mm. at the very start of this year, it's easy to forget that at the start of this year, we were still like locked down, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it's mad. Eh? It, was, it was in January this year that we were at a festival together in Doolin in County yeah. Clare. Um, and that was like, it was felt like a miracle that that festival happened. I know. You know, there was, yeah. there was really not much going on then. It was the first festival of like... Of the post pandemic, sure, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So for a lot of us, it was the a lot of people. It was the first event in two years mm. that they'd been to, um, and I saw your show then with Ronan, mm. and uh, and I remember thinking, wh- I was just so blown away by because because he's 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 the singer, mm. like he's he's the one singing the songs, and you're playing synthesizers. But you would sometimes stand up and start clapping and give everybody clapping and go, you, you, <laughs> you, you just let out these shouts in the middle of the song and really elevate the yeah. energy of the room, which yeah. caught me by surprise because Good, I yeah. knew you more as a, in a subdued, yeah. much more subdued kind of role. Yeah. So that was my first um, my first like inkling of, of, of your sort of. Uh, more extroverted character that's that's mm. in there, mm. you know. Uh, mm. and maybe extroverted's the wrong word, but um, but largely expressive or something. Yeah, it's a, the wanting to fill a room, you know. Yeah, the wanting and, to and fill to, a room, and to wanting to to actually connect with all the people in that room. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Is it, it, he, he? He has been very encouraging. He spotted that I like doing that. So. Mm-hmm. It's been very encouraging. And it helps the two of us to be together. Yeah, and in, I would, in many I would, ways. I would encourage anyone who gets the chance to see you guys as a duo to go and see it because it's a really, it's a really magical show. Um, you you both just give each other the chance to shine. I, I, I think you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. There's a beautiful Nelson Mandela speech actually um, it's, uh, about shining. Do you know about it? I don't know. Um, um, He's saying, it's kind of where I heard it first as a teenager, but Nelson Mandela, I can't recite any of the speech to, but the number one thing about it was he was saying how when somebody shines, it allows the person who's watching them shine to also feel like they can shine. Yeah. You know, it's it's like there's a, I don't know. I'm not a hippie, um, <laughs> but it's like it's like when somebody when somebody glows, it, it's contagious. It, it's contagious, it and it makes you glow. Yeah, and you know when you're on form on a night out, and suddenly you just you're just having a great time, and you you glance up, and there's a lot of faces looking at you like this. Uh-huh. You know? It's like they go away and they glow. Right. They see faces it's like contagious. It's, and it's totally contagious. contagious. And it's contagious. Yeah. It's a glorious thing to shine, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, and everyone has got their own unique way to shine, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. and there's room enough for everyone to shine. It might mm. feel sometimes like there's not because there's so many of us in mm. this world, but everyone's unique and has their own way to shine. Yeah. I think in the Nelson Mandela speech, sorry, it was like he said, nobody should. Nobody under any circumstances should stop themselves from saying what they want to say or feeling what they want to feel and and grabbing the person they want to grab. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, Well, what do you think? You can't just grab anybody. Sorry. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) That's awful. (laughs) You can edit that. (laughs) Don't edit that bit out. Um, Is there anything else you want to say before we perform, try to perform a version of this song? Nope. That's it. I'm good. Would anyone like uh, one of these oranges we have here? Anybody? Yeah, I'll take one. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. 
Would either of you like an orange? Oh, that's a good orange. Yeah? Okay. Great. Can you catch it? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? No? No? Okay. All right, Liam, you can mute me here. I'll unplug and we'll go back to our music setup. I almost want them to all have instruments as well. I know. No, you don't. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank, thank you guys for coming along. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna play Shine. We're gonna that's when this episode will finish. We, we've got a couple more songs prepared for you if you feel like sticking around for those as well. Just a couple. Um, but yeah, Miles, take it away. Take it away on the the dronies. Oh. Uh-huh. 